Hey everyone, this is Tony LeBron with Uplift TV, and we are here at NRB in Orlando, Florida, and I have with me George Barna. He is the founder and executive director of the American Culture and Faith Institute. It's a division of United Purpose. Welcome, George. Good to be with you, Tony. Yes, and so I have um, seen your name in so many articles over the years, and so many uh, projects that you have done, and, and just been so insightful. And recently, you did the American Culture and Faith Institute's Worldview Measurement Project. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, what we were trying to do is to figure out what percentage of Americans have a biblical worldview. There are many different worldviews, and essentially a worldview is simply the way that we make sense of and respond to life. That's why everybody has one. You have to have that. Right. And so it's what tells you what you believe to be right or wrong, good or bad, appropriate, inappropriate, and so forth. Uh, so a biblical worldview mm -hmm. is one that tells you how to make those choices based on basic biblical principles. Okay. So that's what we were trying to measure is how many people when they're making their choices from moment to moment, day to day, they're turning back to the Bible in their minds, in right. their hearts, trying to figure out what does the Bible teach me about this particular situation so that as I make my choice, I'm consistent with God's Word. Fantastic. And in your study, what did you find? Well, we uh, saw that across the country with all adults, 18 and older, 10%, one out of every 10 individuals has a biblical worldview. Okay, one uh, out of 10, 10%. Yeah, okay. which is a little scary because <laughs> yes. that means that, wow, there's different world, not only are there different worldviews, the other ones are dominating in our culture. Right. And the most popular one would be postmodernism, okay. which essentially says that the purpose of life is for me to feel fulfilled, okay. and I'm going to feel fulfilled through my experiences, mm -hmm. through my relationships. There is no absolute moral truth. Mm -hmm. Whatever I feel is right is right mm -hmm. because I say it's right for me. Right absolutely antithetical to a biblical mm -hmm. worldview, but that's the one that's dominating America. And did you measure Christians? Mostly Christians, right? No, no. this was a, a, a random sampling of all adults across okay. the country. Now, among people that we would call born-again Christians, Correct. they would, uh, we didn't ask themselves if they called themselves okay. that, but we labeled them that if they say, after I die, I know I'll go to heaven, mm -hmm only because I confessed my sins and accepted Jesus Christ as my savior. Right. That represents 30% of the culture. Okay. Among that 30% mm -hmm. of the adult population, 31% have a biblical worldview. Okay. So that it's even means higher, that, yeah, a little higher, yeah. not nearly yeah. what we'd like it to be. Yeah, and it also means that probably most of the people sitting in our churches yeah. don't have a biblical worldview. Amazing. So the mission field has come right yes. in the back door. Yes. We gotta be aware yes, of it. Yes, absolutely. And as I think about that, you know, we see statistics how the church isn't growing. And aren't coming to church and evangelism isn't happening well this is uh, an answer if, if, we, if we don't have a biblical worldview and um, that passion then that's a result G generation Tell yeah if, if we yeah. break down the information generationally we know that if we take the two older generations the boomers and the builders mm -hmm. in other words people 50 and older 16 percent of them have a biblical worldview okay. we go to the next younger generation the baby busters gen x whatever right. you want to call them seven percent okay. have a biblical worldview you go to the youngest adult generation commonly right. known as the millennials right. 18 to 30 years of age only four hmm. percent have a biblical worldview and to me that's scary because they are the dominant parenting generation of our youngest yes. children most of them don't have a biblical worldview you can't give what you don't have right. and yet we know that a person's worldview is predominantly developed between the ages of 18 months and 13 years old Incredible. So that means that we've got to get to people when they're young. Parents are one of the primary yeah. influences. Right. If they don't have yeah. what the kids need, the kids are going to be in trouble. George, I think about this. I mean, we're America, we're America, right? We're founded on, in God we trust, a Christian nation. Absolutely. However, our worldview is in a biblical worldview. It's wandered it's over wandered, the years, yeah. and we've allowed it to do that. And so we've got to get back to having strong biblical leadership yes. Yes. where so we is, is know what the church, matters. parents, yeah, I mean, there are three dominant influences on yep. the development of a person's worldview. Their parents, right. the, media, the media, which is okay. the dominant influence, yep. and government. Okay. And government because they create the laws. You know, people say you can't legislate morality. Baloney, that's all the law is. Okay. It tells us right from wrong. That's what morality is. Mm -hmm. And so young people are looking at the law and they're saying, wait a minute, I can do this and it's okay. But if I do this, the government says I have to be punished. Mm -hmm. So again, it's helping to shape in their mind what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad. So those three things, media, government, family, 
those are the three elements that really have to focus. Amazing. The church can yeah. play a key role mm -hmm. in preparing each of them to do what's right. Right. You know, the, um, Jesus tells us that we are the light of the world, right? We are the salt of the earth. And so it is our responsibility uh, to shed uh, this light and in government, in our church, and our families, uh, to, so people can have a biblical view. And, and we have again. to be careful because we found in the study that 46% of mm -hmm. adults think they have a biblical yes. worldview. Okay. Let's Only 10% that. actually have one. And why that matters is that that 36% that think they have one but, but don't, don't uh, they're really not open to learning because they they're think close. they've got they've it got, figured out. Got it together. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we as teachers, mentors, coaches, whatever, we've got to be very sensitive to where a person is and not simply take them at face, uh, at, take them at their word, yes. you know, face value of what they say. If they say, oh yeah, I have a biblical world, it's taken care of. Yeah. It's like, well, you might want to ask a few questions, watch for a little while, yeah, yeah. see how they behave. Is there a self-test that one can do online? Like well, I just think well, a personality test. Yeah, you know, we you, had you could, 40 questions yeah. in the survey, 20 about beliefs, 20 about behavior. Right. We'll be putting it on culturefaith.com and right. people can take that yeah. and see how they're doing. That'd be great. Yeah. Yes. George, thank you for the work that you're doing. Fascinating stuff. If we wanted to find out more about this research, research more in detail, what, where we can find that information? Yeah, right now, culturefaith.com yep. is the website that has that every week for the next month or two. I'll be putting new reports from this study up okay. there, mm -hmm. so there's more coming as well. Culturefaith.com. George Barna. George Barna, thank you so much. Great to be with you. Yes. Thank you.